Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Greetings, everybody. My stats say there's one person watching. Get seven playbacks. Hmm. <laughs> Chateur, how's it going there? Haddock, YouTube is confusing me. Apparently, the stream is starting at 4 p.m., then 7, then 8. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think YouTube's going through a midlife crisis. Um, yeah, I also got my cat ready for kitty cam sitting next to me. Yeah, I finally, I, I wasn't sure I was going to have a cat in for, for the kitty cam, but he finally, uh, he finally sat down. <laughs> hey, James Miller, how's it going there? Um, J greetings, JJ Game. Google teaming up with Walmart versus Amazon Foodway. <laughs> yeah, T watching the Amazon and, and uh, Walmart fight is also getting comical. Jen Sufin, hello there. Albert Crow, hi, how's it going there? KO, 2610, number 2610, your time has come. Bonjour, from France. Oh, greetings, France. All right, so um, today we are going to have a look at um, Hoonix, and we're going to do that live. And if we get the chance, we're going to ask what in the world is going on with uh, Google right now, because they're just kind of getting a little weird. If you watch the uh, things Brian Lund Duke was talking about, you know, he did one about it's time to break Google up, and then he... He did another one. It's like, you know, YouTube's getting weird. And I'm actually starting right now. Where'd it go? There it is. I'm starting right now to compile a list of alternate places I can also host my videos because the writing is on the wall. I think that YouTube is really trying to get rid of a lot of people making things so they can push their broadcast YouTube TV. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff um, if as, uh, as time allows in between things. But pretty much I'm going to start uh, diving in here and, and having a look at, at Hoonix and maybe some other privacy things. I went ahead and threw the latest, tour, uh, the latest Tails install on this as well. Um, in case we uh, want to look at that is in addition to Hoonix. Um, so we'll talk about some of the differences and, and things. And so we'll kind of keep going with that respect. Hello, Noah. How's it going there? Digital Nucleus. How's it going? N nucleus. Digital Nucleus. I don't know where that came from. Nucleus d Digital. Okay. <clears throat> A Digital Nucleus, though, does sound quite exciting. Hello, Borgs. Hey, Mark, how's it going, sir? I mean, bookkeeping for the third straight time. This is two, week, two, year, two full years. Yeah, I got to do with my bookkeeping tonight. I, I, uh, I have this ginormous pile right here that needs help handled. I did, only picked up half of it, so I need to work on some of this. You t the new YouTube material design is horrible. Yes, it makes me want to go vomit. It's like every website in the history of the universe has decided they want to do big, bulky, excess crap. It's like, it looks like every single site on the internet. In fact, every site on the internet now looks about the same. And it's horrid. Horrid. That's kind of what I was going to talk to you about. All right. Um... Let's see. Google told me you were live with two titles twice in the same instance on my phone. Huh. Oh, am I late? No, pseudo Linux. We just started. You are four minutes in. And I haven't really dove in anything yet. Yep, I hit the new Google as well. Vid.me and actually the ones I have written down, div, uh, vid.me is the is one of them that I'm a little leery of. I mean, just seeing some of the things they've been doing, if you you followed what was going on with Eli and them, um, you know that uh, that's, a, eh, that's a little... Mm. Um, library is one of the ones Brian Lund Duke talked about. There's another one called uh, DTube, which is supposed to be like a blockchain video sharing system. So um, all of those are things that, uh, that I'm going to be looking into. I believe you can also now upload video directly to Reddit, if I remember correctly. I don't have a Reddit account, but maybe I should go get one. I mean, it seems like the geeky thing to do, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. Just email you back with the email update. All right. I will have a look at that when we're done here. Uh, close enough. Been using YouTube since 2007. Kind of sad what's become. Yep, yep. I want to save even more cash. I'm doing Wave Apps. What is Wave Apps? Hmm. Like the new dark theme in YouTube update. Really isn't a big deal to me. Oh, YouTube update, not email. Oh, okay. Best Generation Gaming. How's it going there? All right, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at some uh, Hoonixy stuff. We're going to kind of start with looking at the website. Um, so Hoonix is one of the ways that you can access Tor. 
So, of course, if you want to utilize um, a lot of internet security, like a, a lot, of, try to have more anonymity. It's not perfect, but if you want to have more more attempted anonymity, um, using Tor, if it's available, then uh, certainly is something that, that could help. Um, I don't use Tor nearly as much as, as some of y'all might think. I almost never really use it. Um, if I'm looking up specific products I'm looking into, like I was looking, I'm looking into getting some different cameras for some of the things I'm doing, and I did not want anybody to really know which cameras I'm looking into so I don't get bombarded by advertising. So I went ahead and used, uh, used Tor to look those up, so I'm not leaving traces of what I might be interested in laying around the internet. Um, and so... You know, you can download a Tor bundle, which is the worst way to access Tor. Um, if you're just downloading a Tor bundle to your computer is just not very good. Um, you'll have a lot of DNS leakages. Um, it's a lot easier to unmask what you're doing, who you are. Uh, they can fingerprint your computer pretty easy. So there's a whole lot to, uh, to the Tor bundle that you should really like. Uh, Tor bundle should be kind of like kind of like Internet Explorer. You download the Tor bundle to download your good, better version of Tor. So Internet Explorer is the number one browser to use to download a better browser, if you've ever heard that expression. Well, the Tor bundle would be much the same. Download the Tor bundle so you can download a better version of Tor. Um, so what are the better versions of Tor? Um, we're going to look at Hunix today, which I've never looked at prior to today. Um, in fact, I just launched it the first time 30 minutes ago because this thing took forever to download. You have to download two files, one's 1.8 gigabytes, one of them is 2.1 gigabytes. You have to download them both. There is only one server to download them from, so I did, there were no local mirrors or no torrents or anything else. So that kind of got in the way, downloading a four gigabyte file. So that was that's Hunix that we're going to look at today. Um, Cubes is a very nice way of accessing it. In fact, Hunix um, uh, Cubes uses the Hunix system, and so that is the other way that um, you can use uh, use Tor. And that's probably what I'm going to suggest might be the one of the better ones. Um, and then there's Tails. I think Tails I'd probably use more than any, and I kind of prefer Tails over other ones, but um, I, I've been kind of leaning more towards the cubes direction at this point in time, and we'll get into why that is in a bit. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at some comments here before we dive too deep into this. There are still comments are going crazy. All right. Wayback is free. You just pay per transaction. If you're not earning tremendous amounts of money, you're probably running it fine. Okay. Select your profile picture and select dark theme. Easy peasy. Just looks pretty nice at night. Cool. Just pay percentage of what payments you accept. I'll have to look into that. What is that called? Uh, way, wave apps. Let me look into that. Currently, I do uh, PayPal if I'm doing anything for my business that's credit card related. So I'll have to look into some other ones. Uh, let's see. I heard that Twitch is accepting non-gaming content too, although it's owned by another big company, Amazon. Uh, yeah, they they did start. Um, I think I think the first time I heard that was actually a few months ago. Linus Tech Tips used Twitch for non-gaming for a while, and then eventually they said, "Hey, we are now fitting our terms of service to actually use Twitch now." So yeah, uh, Twitch does do some live streams as well. <clears throat> Thirty cents ends up being a lot cheaper in the long run. Yeah. Mm. Don't think you should try a new service. I'm probably not alongside other people leaving YouTube, trying out a new service just because you moved service. See, I don't want to I don't want to switch stuff over. I'm going to put content up in parallel to other services. You know, there are people who try to completely non-Google-fy their lives, including YouTube. And if I have videos at other locations, it's possible to find them in other locations as well. And if YouTube decides to go absolutely nutsoid, then I don't lose everything. I have another place to go to. But ultimately, I want to drive people back to the main website that I have established. Um, and that way, you can keep tabs on what's going on over there. Oh, boy. Um... Yeah, there really isn't a good uh, a good YouTube alternative at this point in time. At least there's other places though you can post your stuff in in case uh, in case uh, any of that. Hey, Techbismo or Technobismal, how's it going there, sir? All right. 
Eh, I'll, I'll look at Twitch, maybe. maybe. Maybe what I should do is I should get myself a better modem. I think with the internet I have now, my modem limits me out because I'm running a Docs 2.0 modem, and I have something that Docs 3.0 would actually help with. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I have other priorities first. All right. Let's go ahead and stop looking at comments for a little bit and uh, pick up a cat, apparently, because he wants to come and say hi. Hello, everybody. You too, Nick. It rocks. All right. So we're going to have a look here at Hunix. Um, so Hunix is a, a very nice high security method of getting on the internet. Uh, it uses Tor, of course. It isolates things. Um, and it, it has, I mean, it has a different thing. That The various methods you might utilize Tor are all completely different. The Tor bundle just goes right onto your main computer. And then you have uh, Tails runs as a full amnetic live system. And that's why I like Tails more is because once you close that thing down, everything that you do is gone. Um, not necessarily the case. Now, that same thing, though, applies in cubes. And that's why I'm leaning more towards cubes because cubes has the ability to install, uh, install the system encrypted so your whole disk is encrypted. And then what you do is you have the, you can isolate different machines. So you can have a machine that saves all your data and comes back, or you can have a Tor connected machine that uh, does not save your data. And you can even take your machine that does save your data and push it through the Tor network rather than pushing it through, through the ClearNet network. And so that's one of the things I really like about cubes is that ability to bounce back and forth between a ClearNet and a Tor type system. Now and then Hunix here is, uh, basically there's multiple ways of running it. We're gonna be running it inside the virtual machines at this point in time. So you wanna come over to your download and select how you're gonna be running it. Now, again, Cubes does run Hunix, and this is probably what I think is the best way of running it is, my personal opinion right now, I think it's Cubes is better. I actually spent half my day in Cubes today so far. Uh, one of the uh, projects that I work on is a consortium of um, social activists. And so yeah, everything we do is, is pretty well secured. Um, you, they do have, I think the, the, uh, Mac OS X is experimental at this point in time. They do have a windows install system. Um, of course we're going to be on the Linux one. Welcome to switch to Linux. Um, so if you come over here, it gives you your various instructions. Now, what you need to do is you need to download these two files. One of these is the gateway and one is the workstation. Now, the reason Hunix works a little bit better than some of the other ones is it sets up two virtual boxes that communicate with each other. The gateway sets up and establishes the Tor connection and gives you a whole lot of Tor configuration tools that I know nothing about. Because <laughs> like I said, I just got onto this and it took me it took me all day to download this. I started downloading it. I want to say at maybe two o'clock I started downloading it and about 630 it finished. That's how long it took me to download it. And I have pretty fast internet here. So you have to download both of these and then you import them into your virtual box. And um, of course they have instructions on how to install virtual box. And then what you need to do is you just need to import the files. Now, I've already done this step. And then what we need to do is we want to, uh, we want to come in and just start the Hunix. You start the gateway and then you start the workstation. And then it will get in here and it will, it will go ahead and, and make your changes. So that's kind of how you download it. Let's see what people are saying on the comments here real quick. Uh oh, computer baskets for a amount of eggs. Twitch mostly for gaming. Lost faith on Eli the computer guy. Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, he has gone a little off the rails. I'll, I'll give him that. But I mean, I, I didn't. I don't take what he says and just go, okay, his word is gospel. I watched what was going on with the VidMe debate, and it was VidMe was doing some weird stuff. It was. It was really weird. Can't you leave YouTube too many good channels that you won't find anywhere else? Yep. PayPal screwed you at all, or are they still playing fair now? Right now, they're still kind of playing fair, but I don't use them a ton. Said Pepto Bismol. Now Tom said it. Yep, yep, yep. The the I am I am in one. I am in one with your brain's waves. Uh, Roger the alien has been spying, and yes, Pepto Bismol is it. By the way. Do you enable do not track mode on Firefox anyway? Um. What I actually, let's see, I turn off all of the geolocation. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've enabled all that stuff. I have no idea. 
I have so many different computers running, I have no idea which ones I've done what with. <laughs> New Linux based on security TI or our launch. I'm, I'm guess. Oh, our launching. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'll have to look into more of them. There's a lot of these security ones are coming up. Tandem switching to Ubuntu Mate. Sweet. Ubuntu Mate rocks. I like it. Two days LB12. Awesome. Well, happy birthday, man. I will probably forget that, but all right. Okay. I'm old, 45. <laughs> Time to ditch Ubuntu for me. Gen 2, Fedora, Debian, Vanilla, Arch. Yep. Yeah. Default password has changed me. <laughs> Great. Now i got to make a tinfoil hat. Yep, yep, yep. You are one with Roger the alien. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to come over to my basic setup over here. Let's just go ahead and throw that over there. All right. Um, so you can see here that I've, uh, I mean, I've downloaded both of these guys. They just need imported. So if you do not know how to import, you do not need to create the machines first. You just launch up virtual machine and you come up here and import appliance. And then you just want to go and find the item that you are going to import. You need to import both of these guys. Now it defaults to these hundred gigabyte, um, drives, which is kind of exciting because this whole computer is only 120 gigabyte drive. So I have 200 two 100 gigabyte drives in addition to my other one up here, which is, I don't know, 35. Uh, but fortunately, they're not taking a whole lot of, uh, of space at this point in time. So they're actually using right now just about four gigs. So, but you can see we can go up there a little bit higher. So I have to be careful though with the space. So now with this running, you just need to launch both of your, um, both of your machines. I'm gonna kick off the gateway, which is actually starting on my other monitor. So here is the gateway. Now these run KDE. That's to me a cool advantage. I like KDE better than XFCE. Uh, my hat's off to the XFCE fans. Um, I do like it. It's just XFCE is not my favorite distro. Um, and let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and launch the Hunix workstation as well. I'm going to launch that one minimized for now. So we'll kind of jump over here. Um, let's see. Clients on Ubuntu Mate, I think he really likes it, just needs me to show him how to get the most out of it. All right. Yep, there you go. That's awesome. And I heard of ad nauseum. You know, I faintly remember hearing something about it, but I have no idea what. I'm getting pseudo Linux cheese for his birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> all right let's go ahead and uh, uh all right so this this guy's on so you can see what we have over here like i said i really have no idea whatever what anything is over here um we can uh there's some tor configurations we can stop tor restart it i can look at uh firewalls you know variety of different things so there's some things over here now. They do give you a warning. Do not use this gateway machine for anything. I'm not even sure why it's 100 gigabytes, to be honest. But uh, anyway, uh, this was this one here. So once this is online and working, then um, what it's going to do is uh, allow the main workstation, which is here, to access the Internet. And it should have guest editions installed. Uh, yep, there we go. Now it's scaling. Just gonna go ahead and scale this out to the size so we can do let's actually just do my picture size so you'll see it, it scales out nicely so it will scale to what you need and now this file over here um, I just put this on here just to test that it does save your files so that's cool it saves my files go ahead and move that to the trash um, so now, when you first ins uh, turn this on it actually does not have the uh, browser um, on it, so you actually have to double click your Tor browser and what it will then do actually is it single click or double click? I don't remember if it's single click or double click um, But the when you first launch it then what it's going to do is it's going to have you install the Tor browser uh, um, And then it's going to ask you which version you want and it gives you the warning don't you don't want to 
Um, you don't want to um, uh, necessarily use, you know, one versus the other. Look at this cat. He's just like chilling. He's like, yo. <laughs> um, so it, it does uh, it does prompt you as to ask you which one would you like to install. So I'm just going to do a what is my IP. I'm going to go ahead and do this through start page because I don't really like DuckDuckGo. Kitty's going to click some keys on my keyboard, I think. All right, so this is actually not. Um, hey, I'm in France. I joined you. Are you still on, uh, gentlemen from France? Bonjour, we's in France. <laughs> so uh, it will give you, uh, you know, whatever your basic exit node happens to be. You should be able to come up here and you can grab a new identity for this circuit up here just by grabbing the tour. You'll see it will change where I am. And so... Okay, a GeoIP is not available here. I'm curious, do they have JavaScript enabled? Oh, duh, hello. About config. Okay, so JavaScript is enabled. I'm a big fan of not necessarily running JavaScript, so... Um, I think what I'm going to, you know, usually I might come in here and turn this off. It's just that JavaScript can be used to um, to unmask you, and so I'm generally not an advocate of, of using JavaScript um, in that respect. I think, if I remember correctly, I think Geo, let's see, uh, I think your Geo-specific items, these guys here, I think are the ones that will tell your locations. I think these ones here give you your locations. Um, I don't, I have to look back into those again, but regardless, um, that's that. Um, so here, let's go ahead and have a look at my IP address again, see if it knows where I am. Yeah, it really doesn't know where I am. Hey, what are you doing? You're not allowed on my desk. You're not allowed on my desk. No, you're not allowed on my desk. I know you want that, don't you? Oh, <laughs> hey, get my desk. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Google's just cleaning up from the mess they made with YouTube. It'll take about a week, most likely. <laughs> hey, Anna Rita, how's it going there? XFCE is lightweight, which makes it good for machines with low resources. Yep, that's why I run, uh, I run um, Peppermint on my small netbook, which actually I wrote my next entire book on. Um, I'm in editorial stage, and uh, we'll be uh, sending out to an editor here before too long. So hopefully I'll get that out within a month or two. All right. Using along with Ad Nauseam with Pale Moon, but Pale Moon blocked it. Huh. All right. Kitty should be a cat model. Yeah. He is the epitome of cuteness is what we call him around here. Um. Doug, duck go <laughs> need to click no script yeah there there i mean you do have the ability here to to uh, enable or disable no script but i would much rather have javascript disabled on the browser level than rely on a plugin to do that so that's why i would go in and disable uh javascript using uh using the config files instead good book downloading and online shopping safety and privacy huh that sounds like a good book Yeah, you can style you can style XFCE so it's not so bland. Yeah, and that's that's why I really think that um, uh, Pepper did a great job with their theming. Uh, Cubes has very limited things you can do with it, and it's recommended to not install extra uh, extra things um, on it for that reason. But anyway, um, here let's go ahead and go to Amazon.com and see what what Amazon says. Um, see if it throws a hissy fit because we're on tour. Sometimes it does. Looks like it does not. By the way, you can now buy a, a uh, an Amazon Echo if you happen to want to be spied on. You can go buy that in some bananas at Whole Foods, man. I mean, great deal. Whole Foods, pick up your Amazon Echo. Whatever. Um, but regardless, um, this is this. Now, there are a lot of other applications on here that are also pretty cool for people involved in the field of, you know, if you're, if you're in the field of, 
you know, social activism and things, you be you will become a higher profile person. And so, you know, they actually have some other tools on here that will help out with. Um, uh, where is the one at? Um, there's uh, there's actually a tool on here that will uh, actually help you with uh, scraping out uh, metadata. Let's look up meta. So this guy over here will actually de-anonymize metadata on files. So, you know, if you've snapped a photo for, you know, the, the hot tabloid magazine and you want to, you know, go and bribe some individual person with it, you can run it through here and take all the metadata off to better de-anonymize who you are. <laughs> Not that I recommend anything like that, but, you know, there are reasons that you might want to remove or strike uh, metadata from files that you have. And so you have the ability to do that in this system. So they do have a lot of neat applications. Um, let's see. So we have VLC, Sound Mixer. Um, looks like I do not have LibreOffice on here. So this runs a basic uh, Debian system. And so if there is something that's missing, as long as it's in the stable Debian um, repositories, then you can install it. I don't know if... Uh, what is the... And just see if there's a um, eh, looks like we'll just need to use use a terminal to install stuff. Console, that'll work. Is it LibreOffice base? I don't remember. I do not actually use LibreOffice. Uh oh, I need the default password. What's the default password? Uh, default password is change me. I should probably change that. Yay, there we are. I was right, LibreOffice Space. <laughs> Let's have a look at comments while that installs. Uh, I have a laptop, which is not slow, but I prefer to use XFCE, my favorite environment. Uh, then, it, then it is made. Yep. I think I've already been there. If you want to buy a laptop and use Linux on it, avoid HP, Dell, Footsie, or any retail brand that most likely locks secure boot. No, actually, Dell does not. Um, HP, I've had, I've had difficulties getting HP to run even on a USB thumb drive on a friend's computer. I could not figure it out, and I ran out of time to look. Um, but I could not get into the bootloader. Um, their desktop computer over there, I thought was an HP, and we were able to run Linux on that, on a thumb drive. Dell does not lock bootloaders. Um, I know Lenovo does not. Um, I have no idea about Fitsu. Uh, but no, Dell Dell is, is just fine. In fact, you can even buy Dell with Linux installed on it if you go directly through their website. Um, not a lot of options. I'd still use like System76 or Pogo or something, but... Um, Dell is just fine, by the way. I use almost all my computers. If they're not custom built, they're Dells. I just like the Dell brand more than anybody else. Eh, Lenovo's are nice too. Grateful my mom could care less about the latest tech. Yep. <laughs> it's logged on and wish I watched this from the start. Just learning about Hunix. Um, yeah, there, there's not a lot. I, all I did is just talk about how to install it and things. So you didn't miss a whole lot, Joey. An HP laptop can disable or enable uh, secure boot, which always disable secure boot and enable legacy instead. Yeah, it might depend on how old the laptop is as well. This one, my friends, is, I don't know, a few years old. You have to worry that she will bring any smart device in the home without being right there with her <laughs> guiding her every step of the way. Yeah, just say no smart devices. None. None. See, the book is on Amazon while you're there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh... Um, oh, you know what? I, I can't paste. I can't paste from one OS into the other OS. Uh, is that the book there? 
piggy uniform, or I guess your pseudo Linux now. Um, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Why does it have a one star rating? Opera have VPN. Is it any good? Being that Opera is now owned by a Chinese company, I'm not sure I'd trust it. <laughs> Uh, some of these smart home devices have major security vulnerabilities. No, I think all of these smart home devices have major security vulnerabilities. <laughs> um, what I generally do though, is I lock mine out so they can't access, like, I don't have any technically smart ones. The closest thing I have are my, um, security cameras, um, uh, but they, they existed. I got those things well before IOT devices were, were really around, so... While they can get on the internet, they're not like technically IOT, but you still do not allow them to be accessible from the internet. That would be a bad thing. So they're locked down. I have to use the VPN to access them. What's the title again? It looks like downloading and online shopping, 21st century. I guess there's a few in the list. People are saying it's horrible though. I want to, I want to, no, not that. I want to see the link. I want to see... No. Let's see what that review said. OMG, this is an exceptionally lame book. Pamphlet is more accurate description. No mention is made in the cover, and there isn't any description to clarify that is specifically aimed at kids and truly clueless kids at that. You know. No, even savvy computer and internet users, I can't hit the read more. Oh, it's because I disabled JavaScript. Um, uh, but, you know, I really can't, I mean, no, even allegedly smart people on the internet need this kind of stuff. Come on, folks. <laughs> I, for one, will not use anything smart in my house. Yep. F9 is a bootloader key on how laptops... Actually, usually it's F12. Um, F9, like HP's F9, um, F12 is the bootloader key on most of them. Um, but yeah, even though getting into the bootloader on the, on my friend's HP, I still could not get the thing to boot off of Linux. I could not get Secure Boot turned off. You want, unless I have a complex home network or I can segment it off, it doesn't touch any other computer or mobile device. Yeah, I'm still working on building the uh, PFSense router. I'm just so low in time right now but i have um i need to be working on the wireless network next and i need to work on the um um i need to work on the vpn and then what i'm going to be doing is uh starting to actually connect devices to it and run it side by side with my other um uh, with my other system as a test so that there i'm looking forward to that because i have a whole lot better control over things than i have right now Hard to buy laptops without paying a fee for the Windows license. Hey, but eventually that's going to go away because Windows 10S has no Windows license. It might be a win for us, except they, I don't think they're going to be dropping the price anytime soon. Anyway, uh, let's see. Best laptops are bought online. Okay, Cubes is just the OS for on a single device. If you're adding smart devices at all, it needs to be segmented off the network layers on your router. Yep. Yeah, and I really like cubes is probably my favorite way of accessing uh, of accessing the um, um, accessing tour, just because I have the the ability to to download files, move them to uh, move them to my personal folders. I can take my personal cube and I can change the network from the the main system into the Hunex system. So if I know I want to be downloading things on Tor, I can do that and then switch it back to the ClearNet if I want. So I kind of like the cubes more, but this is an interesting one. I, I do like what I'm seeing here. Um, I, it's something, I mean, I wouldn't use it on this computer, obviously, it's so limited space, but this might be something I put on my other laptop that has a much larger hard drive and you know that way I I have the option. However, um, I don't know. We'll get we'll get into some other things in a minute. Um, Hunix on two separate machines, one dedicated for the gateway, one for the workstation. If you are a high profile actor, yes, you can do that. Um, there's actually some some settings in there um, that you can find. Oh, have a good night.
Alright, I'm loving the new YouTube layout. So many giant bars, I can barely see the content. Live chat only now shows two messages. Yay! Yeah, the new YouTube layout sucks. <laughs> oh, boy. Is your friend's laptop or a desktop? I'm getting an HP desktop. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, it was a laptop. They, I can't remember what brand the desktop is. I thought the desktop might be HP, but it might be a Lenovo. I don't remember. I just remember the laptop is HP. I could not get Linux onto it at all. I could have possibly wiped the hard drive and installed it, but the objective was just to learn Linux with a USB hard drive, so... Uh, really, man, all these new convenient devices with the herd of Trojan horses. Yeah, yeah, and it's just getting worse. I've tried Solace and Ubuntu Budgie. I've decided to go back to Linux Mint Cinnamon. Cinnamon just works. Yep, that's why I use it. I love cinnamon. Now buy a smart pillow. Yep, and a smart mattress. So it can monitor everything about you day and night. Ooh. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so it looks like I got LibreOffice installed. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Can't use that one. All right, let's see. Office now. We should now have... Oh, oh wait, hold on. There we go, LibreOffice. There we are. It's like, what? <laughs> okay, so there we are. Now I have my writer documents. Now, by the way, guys, um, I, I went through doing some crash course stuff on how to format your own book for self-publishing. Is... That's something you guys want to see a video on, how to use LibreOffice to self-publish your book, uh, getting all the formatting right. Let me know. Um, I'll be uh, thinking about doing a video on that. All right, so let's see. There's Office, um, various settings. Um, all right. Chat support, we have Hex. All right, so that is kind of, let's see. We got uh, Tor down here. Uh, Dolphin File Manager, which you expect with KDE. Is it single click to, or double click to open things? Okay, they do have it set to double click to open things up. Let's see if we can make this uh, make this thing look a little bit better. Uh, there's icons, run activities. Where's the um? I thought you could change the system settings on the desktop. System settings, there we go. Just want to see if we can make this thing look a little bit better. Hey, if we got oxygen, I'll be happy. Yeah. There we are. Well, it's an older version of Oxygen, but uh, that'll work, so that's not too bad. Where's my, uh, somebody remind me, where's my, uh, how do I change the desktop background again? It's not refresh desktop, is it? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> it's been too long. Been way too long. I think it's that. Oh well, we'll not worry about it. I thought it was. Hold on. Configure desktop, which I don't see. <laughs> they took my configure desktop away. All right. Um, now other things. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, we're going to load up the documentation. When you first load up the documentation, it warns you that if you uh, are running the Tor browser, then it will um, possibly link what you do here onto that. So obviously I am, so it did link those, but I don't really care. This is a lot of documentation. I did not get a chance to read all this, obviously. Um, but you can read any topic that you're looking at. Um, you can read all about over here. Um, so you can actually access, um, you know, history, uh, Tor, how the thing works, the leak protection, what does this do for leak protection? And a lot of it, it does this just by um, 
by running that separate gateway, which is essentially the same thing that Cubes does. So you really have the ability in here to uh, to use the network, make it your own. I think one of the major differences is without going, you can of course go into your gateway probably and turn off Tor. Um, so if you want to access the clear net, you should be able to do it there. Um, but this does give you that ability to access everything through the Tor network rather than just the internet on the main web browser. And that's the biggest problem with the Tor bundle. Now the other, uh, the other uh, virtual machines, um, uh, like the other systems like uh, Cubes and Tails, will allow you to do the same. Of course, Cubes, you can run on the same computer simultaneous things through ClearNet and through Tor in complete isolation from each other. So that's really why I like Cubes more than any of the other ones. Uh, but Tails is pretty nice if you just need to get on, on the internet. Um, so uh, let's see, we have a whole lot, of, whole lot of other information. So let's see, let's go ahead and load up the Hunix check, see what this does. It should just let us know everything's working, right? Go ahead and look at some comments while well, that's going through. Let me go ahead and move this down a little bit. So in 76, other Linux brands are the best, most customized laptops. Yep. Smart pillow. Yes. Yes, indeed. Cost could be zero instead of $12.95. Get a $50 Amazon gift card instantly upon approval for an Amazon Visa records card. No! I will pay the $12 if I want to decide I want the book. Yep. Could be something I could use at my own church for a youth group. Yeah. That's actually not too bad. Okay. So, tells us everything's working. So, it looks like we could be running, uh, we could run some updates to the system. Um, we'll not bother with that yet, but. Exceptionally lame book. Pamphlet is more accurate description. No mention is made. Uh, on the cover, if there are any other descriptions clarified specifically aimed and truly clueless kids. Uh, least savvy internet computer and user. I was dumbfounded at how useless this book is. It's 48 pages plus bibliography of dumb material. That was the Amazon review. <laughs> yep. You can switch the old layout like I did. Thank God. Yeah. Get Dell or Acer. Yes, yes. Tech Bismo. Convince pseudo Linux. Don't do HP. I boycott HP. Let me tell you why I boycott HP because I do. Um, when I was a lowly little graduate student making a grand total of $1,000 a month and a contracted stipulation that I could not get any external work, my computer that I was writing my doctoral dissertation died and I had to get a new computer to write my doctoral dissertation. This is right when Vista was coming out. So I get a computer that I could barely afford running Vista with half of the required minimum RAM. Vista required one gig of RAM minimum. This thing had half a gig in it. Computer never worked out of the box even after I upgraded the RAM to two gigs of RAM, which was the most that computer could hold. Thing never worked, so I shipped it back to HP. They're like, it looks like it was dropped. Well, you know what? Maybe it was dropped by the stupid Circuit City store that I bought it from, or maybe they're throwing pallets around. I never dropped the computer, but they did not allow, they did not, you know, pick up the warranty on that. I said, you know what? I was a lowly student that saved up a money for a long time to buy a computer and the thing never worked. They shipped it with less than RAM than was required and they would not honor their warranty. I decided at that point in time, I would never buy an HP product and I would steer everybody away from HP forever. And I have. Um, nope, HP, they can go out of business tomorrow for all I care. I will not do business with them. So that's why I don't do HP. Um, Dell is just about as incompetent, but I've never actually had to deal with any of those issues with Dell. And their hardware is pretty good. I think Dell and HP both have good hardware. Um, I just, I won't deal with HP. No. Nope. I hold grudges. That's right. That's right. Toward the idea of starting a youth class on responsibility in the internet social networking. Yes, do it, Mark. Do it. The schools are not teaching this stuff. The schools just teach them, if the form pops up, fill it out. That's how scammers are making all this money. Teach them. It is up to us to teach the younger generation the importance of doing things online. All right. Okay, fine. Amazon needs to fix this YouTube live chat bug. 
who gets a definite need, I was told they won't care or listen. No, they will absolutely love it. Anything dealing with youth and technology, they're going to eat it up. It shows that you are actually a human being that is not an old dinosaur stuck back in the Stone Age. They will love it. Self-publishing is useful. Yep. And I will be self-publishing self future books. So far, I'm looking at Create Space as the best place to do things. Uh, even even my book, Testing and Temptations, um, it cost me $8.50 for me to buy a copy of my own book. Create Space, I could drop that price to $2. And that's, you know, and that's the, that's the thing. So in fact, soon I'm going to actually take, um, because there's a lot of, of textural errors in testing and temptations. I'm eventually going to pull that out from the current contract I have and self publish it myself, um, in a lot better formatting, a lot better text updated with corrections. So that's what I'm going to do. I should make a book at my school. I'm reading a book called white Fang and really good book. I might read it after this live stream. Yeah, that is a pretty good book. And yes, you should make a book. Running a Lenovo dual boot, Windows 7, and Mate runs great, better on Mate than Windows. Yep. Next thing is IoT smart restrooms, which watch you. Uh, China, China already has them. Um, you have to submit yourself to a face scan to get toilet paper in a public restrooms in China. I am not kidding. <laughs> In addition to Raspberry Pi, what are your thoughts on leveraging devices like Tableau for homemade streaming content? Um, I do that personally on a Raspberry Pi running um, Open Source Media Center, and I absolutely love it. It is well worth it. It is absolutely awesome. Um, I actually did at one point in time have a full laptop there in that position, motherboard fried on the laptop, so I switch over to the Raspberry Pi, which works just as well and takes a ton less power. Um, and it's a lot smaller. In fact, I literally have it sitting on the back of the TV stand. You don't even know it's there, which is kind of cool. Except the fact I have a Cat6 cable wired to it. <laughs> Want it to be faster. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Got a question. What do you think will happen with Intel, ME, AMD, PSP, and other hardware backdoor? I do not know anything about it. Shoot me a PM with some details and I'll look into it. Next will be cameras in the bowl. Yep. You will be charged for the... Never mind. <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> well, quite a few don't care about privacy nor question things. They just go, oh, and follow uh, follow the sheep. Well, the thing is, is that you're going to get... The, there's sheep followers no matter... You know, there's sheeple that are old and sheeple that are young. But at, at least if you talk about it, you'll, you'll convince some people that you really do need to think about this stuff. I'd actually use Mint instead of Arch on the new desktop. Yeah, I, I love Mint. I'm loving Mint. Um, and, you know, somebody somebody had said, you know, there's a, so many of new distros targeting the younger Windows users. And, you know, the reality is that's so true. But at the same token, you know, at the same token, the reality of the matter is... Um, People want to get away from Windows, and we don't all have time to sit here and become system administrators, terminal gurus, and whatever else. I love the fact that there's great distros like Linux Mint out there that make it easy for a Windows user to switch without having to learn a whole lot of overhead. Is it, I mean, is it better and more advantageous to learn the terminal and all these commands? Absolutely. And those that, once they get onto Linux and want to learn more, will be able to get in and learn more. But the reality is it's awesome that we have the ability that we don't have to do that and so that's that's kind of cool speaking of sheeple that reminds me of the time when women followed a group of people that were walking on a red light red light wait um woman followed a group of people that were walking on a oh ow i get it now ouch seriously smart Pots, OMG, hell would they need smart pot mean? Too hard to check on your plants. Yeah, the, yeah, that's great. Cubes OS rocks. Yep. Yeah, and this, by the way, this is Hunix. This is not Cubes we're running now. This is Hunix. Um, uh, I actually run, I, I actually have a real build, a production build of Cubes. I actually have two production build of Cubes. One of my Cubes builds is specifically dedicated to, um, 
specifically dedicated to the project that I work with some activist groups. Um, the other one is actually my personal one, which has, you know, a lot of other things that I do on it. Um, which actually I'm considering moving my banking, uh, stuff from the external distro onto my cubes distro, at least for a backup, maybe. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the thing. So love cubes. This is Hunix though. And, uh, I don't know. I kind of like Hunix. Um, what I, the, my advantage, let's, in fact, yeah, let's, we'll stop on the comments for now. We'll pause there for the comments. I think one of the advantages I like on the Hunex is I get a, um, I, I like, uh, I like KDE better than I like XFCE. Um, it just has a more modern feel to it. That's some things I like about it. I like some of the extra tools I have here, like my metadata scrubber, which I'm assuming I can probably install on the other one as well. Um... I like the fact we have a lot more control on this. So pull up your gateway and you have a whole lot more control. Uh, global firewall settings. Let's just have a look at some of these. I have no idea what any of these are. Uh, what was that password again? Change me. And if you would use this as production, by the way, change all your passwords and such. All right, so this is a configuration file. So, okay, so you'd want to read through this and um, okay that's cool do not change anything below unless you know what you are doing okay all right so this configuration file settings um, we have a terminal here we can so we can do a whole lot on here I think you can do more stuff with regarding the the tour setup on Hunix than you can directly on cubes but maybe I just never looked for it in cubes as well um, and maybe you can do all that over there as well um, the desktop applications nice I like the fact uh, well I mean I guess cubes has uh, Debian build and a fedora build so you can choose which one of the two you like they're both about the same to download um, they're both uh, about four gigs using um, uh, one of the major things is that if you do want to keep things isolated into virtual machines, um, this is uh, this is actually a good way to go. Um, the the Hunix is a good way to go because this all runs on your host computer, so your host computer is running as your as your basic clearnet system, and then the Hunix runs as the Tor based system. Versus Cubes, the whole desktop loads it loads a clearnet network card and a Tornet at the same time. Now I don't know this. Does anybody who knows Cubes um, has Cubes solved the fingerprinting issue? Um, this setup, because everything's running in a virtual box, does solve the majority of the fingerprinting issues. So it makes it a whole lot harder to fingerprint you. Same thing with like Tails. If you don't change anything in Tails, it is almost impossible to fingerprint you in Tails. That's a reason why you might want to run Tails. Um, so, but this one here, um, this one here is pretty nice. I like it. Um, I'm going to jump into the comments. Let me know. I have Tails on this machine. Would you, we'd like to boot into Tails. Uh, let me know if you want me to boot into that and we'll talk about Tails a little bit. And then maybe we'll go on and start complaining about YouTube a little bit. Uh, smart pants, smart underwear, smart shoes, smart socks. Eww, Dell is even worse. Yeah, I just didn't have a bad experience with Dell. So, <laughs> You want a good computer, make it yourself. Yes, this, this computer here I do all these streams and video production on is a full custom built computer. I think that that is uh, definitely it. Um, although, I mean, this one over here is just a $300 Lenovo tower and it actually works awesome. I love it. I should probably upgrade the RAM. I should probably max out the RAM of the thing. I might do Dell, but it's pretty expensive. Gateway sucks. Ah. <laughs> years and years and years ago, I bought a gateway computer. Of course, I was a broke college student. So I financed it, and what do they do? They give you a gateway credit card. I kid you not, this is a gateway credit card. <laughs> it's bound for the shredder. <laughs> I'm still going through all through my old files, and uh, I have a, about a pile about three or four inches high for the shredder. Gateway, yeah, don't get a gateway computer. They suck. Um, H uh, HP is the best, but God's honest truth, HP has been good overall good as, as tech. Yeah, I mean, the, the technology for HP is fine. I just won't deal with them anymore. Le uh, Lenovo System 76. Mm. 
Smart bathtub, smart showers. Yeah, I got lucky this year because I have a class in web design that actually teaches some code from scratch. Wow, that's shocking. That's cool. Actually, I mean, I started my business using Notepad to word to code everything. I, I upgraded to better software. Of course, now we have things like Bluefish that are just absolutely awesome. Um, talk to our deacons, see what they think. Absolutely, you should. DVM, I was looking at Dell's expensive products too. Seventh generation, Intel Core i5, Windows 10. <laughs> Windows 10. <laughs> um, no, actually, 500 bucks is a good deal for that that computer, and uh, just as long as you scrub that Windows 10 off. <laughs> Switch. Did you read the book White Fang? Um, probably in school. I believe I read it, but I don't remember anything about it. Learning curve, big time, learning Linux after running Windows. Yeah. And and I love the distros that are making it easier for people to get more productivity done without having to sit there and spend. Like, we don't have time. The average person does not have a week to figure out how to get their computer built. That's why I like Mint. I don't have to take a week. Let's install it and it's good to go. Buy skin from skin.com. So those ugly, bulky scratches don't show up. Oh, yeah, okay. The head of the other students. Good. NSA, National Stalkers Alliance. <laughs> HP isn't the best by any means, but not too bad. Yeah. Admit that all that Dell laptops have worked for me a couple years. Using Notepad to practice HTML code. Sweet. That's awesome. No smart showers. Yeah, yeah, they have cameras in there to monitor how well you're cleaning yourself. They send your photo feed up to the company every every few seconds. Yep, yep, yep. Crap does 10. It's, 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 it's wind blows 10 from micro spy. Come on. <laughs> Stores keep record of who enters just to sell information of where you go shopping to advertisers. Yes. We have to do a Stallman checkpoint. You will need to scrap any Windows stickers off and install GNU Linux in order for it to be switched to Linux approved. He'll send you a badge in the mail. Now, it does not have to be switched to Linux approved because I run Mint and that is an abomination to Stallman. So, um, there you go. And it'll be 50 bucks still cheaper than Windows. Yeah, well, you know, it'll actually be 50 bucks cheaper for the for the manufacturer. They're not, do you think they're gonna pass the savings on to the customers? Nope. I use elementary OS and it works out of the box. Yeah, the problem with elementary OS is if you wanna take, if you wanna do anything that's not out of the box, that seems to be when it breaks. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, shut this down and we'll go ahead and shut down our gateway as well. So that's Hunix. Yeah, Hunix is pretty cool. I think I'm going to keep the files. I'm going to move them off of this computer, put them on my main server, but um, that's that. Let's go ahead and uh, have a quick look at Tails. So I'm just going to drop that in there. Um, now, Tails is going to warn you that you're running in a virtual machine um, because essentially if you're running it in a virtual machine then whoever is controlling that virtual machine could spy on what you're doing so keep an eye on that I didn't get that warning in Hunix but I think they made that clear on the downloads people you making videos about Linux thanks man hey no problem the Nvidia card that uh, also with my Nvidia card that Linux doesn't like oh cool that's awesome if they have the Nvidia card figure figured out all right, so here we are booting up Tails. I th yeah, I think they also have guest editions, as you can see. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us what we want to do for the language keyboard input. And then if you do need to do any like pseudo commands, by default, there is no root accessibility in the system. So if we just click start Tails, then this thing will connect and have no root privileges enabled. If you need root privileges, then you can come over here. You can set an administrative password. Um, let's do tails. Confirm your password of tails. Again, just do that if you need to. You can change your, let's see, changing keyboard layout. Uh, you can also 
Um, by default, it will spoof your MAC address. You can turn that on or turn that off, and then you can set your network connection. So hit start tails, it's going to give you a restart. And uh, this is basically just uh, Debian running a basic uh, standard uh, GNOME build. Let's go ahead and uh, push that into there. And I'm actually going to not exit. There we go. I'm going to get rid of me for a minute. There we are. So here is Tails. Um, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start synchronizing the clock. So you'll see that notice notification. It has to synchronize the clock prior to connecting to the Tor network or else it could... Uh, de-anonymize you and so now it tells us that Tor is ready. You can also come up here and you can see what the Tor onion circuits look like inside of Tails. So you can see what it's doing and then you can uh, click on these to see what it is uh, what it is doing. This is blah blah blah. Look at that. All right so um, come up here. Here's your Tor browser. Um, now, you can set this up. You can, of course, run this in a virtual machine. Um, you can run it as a live key, or you can install it onto a live key. And if you install it onto a live key, then you have the option to run your, um, uh, you have the option to run a um, uh, persistent drive. So this will also allow you to save files on it and still be amnetic. So it will save a few files, but it will forget all of the metadata and everything else that you happen to do. You can come over here, click the Tor check, and this is gonna do a check on Tor, so this is not my real IP address, so this is working, and it does tell you that JavaScript is enabled. So if we click on this, um, it should actually tell you, let's see if it warns you not to use JavaScript enabled or not, I, I don't know what it's gonna do. Okay, so, Basically, they, they tell you here that it does tell you that um, um, you can turn off JavaScript here as well. Um, again, I usually just would do that in the, in the basic system. Let me actually refresh the page, see if blocking scripts is going to. Okay, so blocking the scripts is going to enable that or disable that. See, it has uh, uBlock Origin or MuBlock Origin if you're a geeky guy that knows Greek stuff. Um, then you have that, and then we have Thunderbird, we have KeyPass, Pigeon. Of course, anything you do in here is going to be wiped when you close this out, unless you go in and configure. You'd have to install Tails onto a secondary drive and then configure the persistent volume. So I think it should give me an error if I do this, if I remember correctly. So here you'll see that it will it will tell you that we cannot be setting up the, the uh, persistent drive. So you have to install it onto the... USB drive to set up your conf um, your persistent files. So this one here, if you like GNOME, you can use Tails. If you like KDE, you can use Hunix. And if you like XFCE, you can use Cubes. So there's your lowdown on using Tor <laughs> effectively. All right, let's go ahead and close that, that out. And then um, let's go ahead and uh, let's go back to website stuff. Let's go ahead and complain about YouTube a little bit. Obviously, one of the things that they're doing is a lot of crazy, weird, a lot of crazy, weird demonetization. Like, why is Brian Lunduke's stuff on the terminal applications being demonetized? Um, that's weird. And we have a lot of those, a lot of those types of questions or a lot of those types of issues coming in and going in the middle of it all. Let's go ahead and just go to YouTube and have a look at it. We'll go ahead and complain together. Like, oh, oh, it's why, why? It's like every website does this now. Um, let's do, is it outlook.com? Okay, every site looks the same. Why? 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 Why do we have these big, bulky, bright, contrasty, horrid, ugly colors? It makes me vomit. Ugh. Oh, look at these modern. Ugh. This is 
horrible. This is a horrible theme. Oh, dark theme turned on. Ooh, activate the dark theme. Yay. This is not bad. Okay, I don't mind this. Okay, this whole thing looks about as scary as this trailer right here. Right here with this clown. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but this clown. Um, right there in the middle. This is freaky. This is so horribly... Ugh. Uh, there's configurations. Send feedback. Come on. Does it work? Is my keyboard, okay, my keyboard's working. This, a page, a web page is slowing down your browser. What would you like to do? Stop it, thank you. Um, okay, well, apparently, I don't know, I don't know. Apparently, I can't give them feedback. Maybe they <laughs> fix your feedback system. I don't know. This is horrible. Like, between the demonetization, uh, channel, you know, channels kind of going on and off, all sorts of weird things happening. I don't know what's going on on YouTube. Other than the best thing I can think of is they're just trying to purge out a lot of people and things so they can focus on the big networks and having their big YouTube TV thing. But, look, I mean... Do they have the same designer doing these sites? They all look the same. It's like, what is going on? This and this is horrid. This is ugly. This is terrible. This is garbage. I hate it. <sighs> Let's go ahead and have a look at some themes here. Let's see. Can we see the cat if I change to the cat? Yeah, we can see the cat. Look at that. We can see the cat. Let's do the cat. Mm. The elitists love Linux Mint. Would you like to fight me about it? Um, oh, the elitists I love. Wait. Oh. People should use whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, to the elitist, I love Linux Mint. Would you like to fight me about it? And that's the thing, you know. The thing is, is, is that by running Linux Mint, I'm actually getting production done rather than fighting with my graphics card for the next five hours. <laughs> that's just my thought. <laughs> Use tens of distros in the past from super secure, easy as pie. Yep. All right. Have a good night, JJ Games. Uh, Bunsen Labs. Haven't checked that one out. But still intend to run Arch Labs. Yeah, I wanna I wanna learn more about Open Box uh, Arch Labs Open Box. You know, I wanna learn more about those. I, I mean, I don't have a, a ton of time right now. So, Ubuntu and Mint Harvest proprietary software or binary blobs. Why Richard Stallman don't like it? He doesn't even like Fedora as a as a full free OS. Yeah, and, and you know you can you can get rid of some of the proprietary stuff, but some of the proprietary stuff is what allows the thing to actually work. Um, and for me, it's worth uh, it's worth the trade off for me. Um, and you know I can block a lot of the other stuff on a router level. All right, does Tails have any other real benefit other than Hunix with cubes and wiping clean after shutdown? Um. Well, it's Tails does not run Hunix, it, and um, Hunix uh, is is completely separate. Um, but uh, Tails, well, one major advantage of Tails is it's a fraction of the size to download. It's only like one gigabyte of download, um, a little like one point two. Um, it will also um, uh, it will also um, uh, Verify its own download when you download it what, using the, the Tails um, downloader uh, application, so it will verify itself. And you can you can put it onto a live key, and that's one of the major advantages. So if you have a simple live key that would attach to your keychain, you could literally throw a, a Tails like. Um, let me grab this. Now I have this on cubes, but it's it, running running cubes on a USB drive, jumping it from computer to computer is different. But I have I keep these guys here, um, which you can't see because 
Um, there we are. Let's switch over to here. So I run these guys here. My This is running my Debian. This is actually a cubes build. Now, taking cubes and porting it from computer to computer is not e easily predictable because you have to go in there. Oftentimes, if you change the computer that cubes is used to, you have to go in and reconfigure the, the hardware to work with that computer. And so it's not easily portable. It is portable. It's just not easy to port. Um, Hunix requires that extra level of virtualization. So you need to run it on a computer that has that and it's the huge thing. With Tails, you can drop it right on one of these little guys, attach this to your keychain, and any computer this will work on as long as it will boot off of a USB drive. So that's your major advantage of Tails. Um, that's the major advantage is, is uh, you can boot it off of anything without messing with the configurations. So that's your advantage. Trouble with new KDE login software with my NVIDIA card. Wanted to try KDE, but there were login software really screwed with my NVIDIA card. Yeah, I can't really help with the NVIDIA card stuff. Now all YouTube comments are turning black. <laughs> How exciting. I always thought the GNOME should look like that. New YouTube logo. That was unnecessary. Yeah. Material design for you. Uh, somewhat works on mobile. Had no place on, on the desktop. Yep. YouTube is a ghetto and looks like it too. <laughs> Sitting here for months wondering when YouTube will change the theme. They suddenly push on almost every user who hadn't had it before. Yeah, to be fair, actually, they pushed it to non-logged in people a long time ago. Those of us that stayed logged in didn't get the new one. Because I've been seeing the new theme for a while on Firefox that I don't have YouTube logged into. Yeah, but they swapped the logo and then pushed this on everybody, and it's become this giant hellish nightmare. They don't care what we think. Nope, they don't. <clears throat> I had opted in a few months and just found out recently that random people on YouTube started getting it, even some pages not changed yet. Yep. There's a button you can press while you click on your profile picture that says restore old YouTube. I'm going to look at that. Maybe if we all do that, they'll get the picture. Where is that button at, pseudo Linux? NVIDIA and Linux is not a good mix, but Ubuntu works with the NVIDIA, but the open source version sucks. Okay, well, there's an option. Because uh, the dark theme makes it easier to use at night. Sure, Linux Mint should... I thought Linux Mint should handle NVIDIA, but I've had a number of people ask me about NVIDIA cards on Linux Mint, so I don't know. Hit using YouTube at night before this feature was enabled. I'm getting a laptop from Dell that has NVIDIA. Uh-oh. Let us know how it works. And when you solve that problem, I'm going to send everybody over to you. <laughs> Do some videos about it. <laughs> I'll send people your videos. The new YouTube logo, but hate the new layout. So the old layout is the one for me. Let's hope YouTube will keep it forever. Yeah, probably not. Off topic, but what you think about saw a new trend of people getting offended over everything. I think people need to go and grow up a little bit because this world is not going to pander to your every little powdered desires. Get over it. So, yeah, and it's, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, the social justice warriors. The social justice warriors... Um, they can, they, we should, you know what we should do? We should take all the people who do not want to participate with social justice warriors and put them in one or two states, maybe like California or something like that, and then leave the rest of us everywhere else and see what happens to the two populations. This is a great long-term sociological experiment. I bet that those guys over there will fall into complete disarray because <laughs> my feelings are hurt. Grow up. 
There's a business world out there that doesn't care about it. In fact, where is that? I'm going to look something up. I know where this is. Um, there is a um, there is a uh, academic professor. Is this their correct list? There's an academic professor, um, a, uh, a teacher who in 1996 wrote an article in the um, San Diego Union Tribune. And this is his article. This is actually a summary of his article. Um, so this was written, okay, 96. So this is 20 years ago. This is what he said. And by the way, he has a book called Dumbing Down Our Kids about where we are going to be if this modern education trend carries on. Unfortunately, there are some things that children should be learning in school, but don't. Not all of them have to do with basic academics. As a modest back-to-school offering, here are some basic rules that may not have found their way into the standard curriculum. Rule number one, life is not fair, get used to it. The average teenager uses the phrase, it's not fair, 8.6 times a day. <laughs> That's a 20-year-old statistic. You got it from your parents who said it so often they decided they must be the most idealistic generation ever. When they started hearing it from their kids, they realized rule number one. Rule number two, the real world will not care about that much about your self-esteem as you, as you or your school does. It will expect you to accomplish something before you feel good about yourself. This may come as a shock. Usually when inflated self-esteem meets reality, kids complain it's not fair. Rule number three, you won't make 40,000 a year right out of high school and you won't be vice president or have a car. Well, you will have a car phone in 2017. Um, you may even have to wear a uniform that doesn't have a gap label. Does gap still exist? <laughs> Rule number four, if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss. He doesn't have tenure. He tends to be a bit edgier. When you screw up, he's not going to ask you how you feel about it. Rule number five, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping. They called it opportunity. They weren't embarrassed making minimum wage either. They would have been embarrassed to sit around talking about Kurt Cobain all weekend. Of course, insert modern day trendier guy nowadays. Kurt Cobain was big back in 96. Uh, rule number six, it's not your parents' fault. If you screw up, you are responsible. This is the flip side of it's my life and you're not the boss of me and other eloquent proclamations of your generation. When you turn 18, it's on your dime. Don't whine about it or you'll sound like a baby boomer. Ouch, I think he just said something bad. <laughs> Rule number seven, before you were born, your parents weren't as boring as they are now. They got that way from paying your bills, cleaning your room, and listening to, tell, to you tell them how idealistic you are. And by the way, before you go save the rainforest from the blood-sucking parasites of your parents' generation, try delousing the closet in your own bedroom. Rule number eight, your school may have done away with winners and losers. Life hasn't. In some schools, they'll give you as many times as you want to get the right answer. Failing grades have been abolished and class valid valedictorians scrapped, lest anyone's feelings be hurt. Effort is as important as results. This, of course, bears not the slightest resemblance to anything in real life. Rule number nine, life is not divided into semesters and you don't get summers off, not even Easter break. They expect you to show up every day for eight hours and you don't get a new life every 10 weeks. It just goes on and on. While you're at it, very few jobs are as interested in fostering your self-expression or helping you find yourself. Fewer still lead to self-realization. Rule number 10, television is not real life. Your life is not a sitcom. Your not, problems will not be solved in 30 minutes minus time for commercials. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go to jobs. Your friends will not be as perky or as pliable as Jennifer Aniston. Or enter whoever the latest person is now. Rule number 11, be nice to us Linux nerds. You may end up working for them. We all could. Rule number 12, smoking does not make you look cool. It makes you look moronic. Next time you're out cruising, watch an 11-year-old with a butt in his mouth. I'm speaking to you young folks. That's what you will look like to anyone over 20. Ditto for expressing yourself with purple hair and or pierced body parts. 
Rule number 13, you are not immortal. If you are under the impression that living fast, dying young, and leaving a beautiful corpse is romantic, you obviously haven't seen one of your peers at room temperature recently. And rule number 14, enjoy this while you can. Sure, parents are a pain and school's a bother and life is depressing, but some days you'll realize how wonderful it was to be a kid. Maybe you should start now. And that is also for you young folks. Incoming is the link for that article. I heard Chrome was heading, uh, adding this feature first. They optimized it for Firefox and more browsers. I have no idea. Which feature? The social justice warriors? No! Chrome for social justice warriors. It automatically filters out everything that might be offensive. <laughs> Your whole websites will be black. <laughs> uh, it's time for all of us, including creators, to start producing content and posting on YouTube alternative. DTube and VidMe are good alternatives. Yeah, I need to start looking at some of those. People can get offended if you talk to them these days. That's right. You know, I was... Uh, I was out on Friday, went to an amusement park with uh, the, the young man that I mentor on Friday and uh, good last thing before the school started. And um, we're, we're uh, standing in line and we ended up sharing a roller coaster cart with a person I'm we're pretty sure was, was a transgender individual going through a change. And I, I just kind of wanted it at a, I kind of wanted to ask, which pronoun do you prefer I refer to you as? And see if the person was offended. Because all of these people are like, you need to ask what pronoun I would go by. Well, what if I'm offended if you ask me what pronoun you go by? I think your entire theory goes out the window. So, you know, just something to think about. <sighs> okay, so when you click on your profile picture, the bottom of the toggles, there's a button that says Restore Old YouTube. I do not have one such button. Bummer. I'm stuck. That's all right. I mean, I got to get used to it at one point in time or another. So, rather see everyone migrate to another uh, to another site. Yeah. Waste of time thinking that Alphabet will change one day. If they change, it will be for the worse, not the better. Yep. Go to the internet Wayback Machine and compare the style. Yep. Well, I like the new update. It's my opinion. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the thing. We can't do anything about it. So I'm going to complain about this one video, and you'll probably never hear me say anything about it again. But that's okay. SJW's poisoned on fluoride and deception. Yes. Greetings, Daniel Turbs. How's it going? I hate some trends. I actually learned from school and, like, seventh grade. Yep. Connections and teachers just sits there and talks. And talks and talks and talks. I was a teenager. My mother told me life is not fair, and she said, welcome to it. Yep. This PDF file is good, but geez, who typed this? They're so broad and want it to sound scary. Blood-sucking parasites. Baby boomers. Well, you actually had to be alive in 1996 to understand about 60 or 70% of it. In fact, I actually posted this outside my dorm room wall about six or seven times. People kept on tearing it down. <laughs> um, but... Um, yeah, um, you are, I mean, a lot of those, those were, like, if you think of the social justice things now, um, those were not things that were even talked about in 1996, but what you did hear a lot about it is destroying the rainforest and baby boomers are destroying the world and car phones and all this. It really was more of a piece of its time, so those older folks in, in the audience now will understand it a lot more than the younger folks, but absolute, um, absolutely, it was certainly a product of its times. Be nerds. Be nice to nerds, me. <laughs> Who you're calling young, but hey, I'll take it. Yep. Uh, so many Linux distros to try. Yep. Article was great, especially Rule 14. Yep. <clears throat> Bookmark the website. I agree with all these rules. Yep. Pretty soon, the unicorn will be the next. Um, they already are. Uh, where's it at? Um... I have a YouTube tab over here. Unicorn movement. Oh, yeah. This is quite a scary video right here. Don't watch it if you're faint of heart. Someone please help this man. Yeah. The Diary of the Tantra Unicorn. Chapter 1, The Wedding. 
yes, um, the unicorn movement is alive and well. Never seen these guys before. These, like, Jason murderers, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I sexually identify as a tactile <laughs> Okay. We're heading to total 1984. Yep. Click. Tom, you click on the wrong thing. When you click your profile picture, you see a box pop up. You don't click it twice. No, I think that it changes for different people. Clicking the profile picture, yes, I have nothing down here that will that says anything about changing an old account. Box with the dark oh okay, look at the dark mode toggle. So I gotta come over here then, not inside the dashboard. Actually, um, I do not have the option for the dark mode toggle. Yes, I do not have the option for the dark mode toggle when I'm logged in. That's exciting. Well, I think we've pretty much, uh, we've run out of time on the comments. We have run out of things to talk about. I think it's about time to head out when we find the kitty cam. And the kitty's like, I think I know what time it is. Look at that cat. He's like, I know what time it is. I see you reaching for the temptations. He knows. Okay, Mo, um, is it Pavla's law? Which law is that? Pavla's law, I think. The cat is now well trained that when I sit here at this computer and talk into this microphone with this bright light on, he knows at the end of it, I even go near this bag of temptations and the cat's ready to go. Do you want to come over here? Come on. Come over here. Come on. Okay. Do, 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 do. Ooh, smell what's in there. You like what's in here, huh? Yeah, 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 here we go. Oh, over here. There you go. Make sure it's in line for the people on watching on the cameras. You're a famous kitty. Yes, you are. Oh, we dropped one. We'll get it. We'll get it. Over here. <laughs> oh, this way. There you go. Oh, let's find that other one that we dropped, huh? And oh, 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 hold on. <laughs> He's <gra> great. <laughs> He's wanting it. He's like, I want it. Let me at that temptation. <laughs> bye bye, peoples. I hope you enjoy switching to Linux. See you later, all. <laughs>